this interesting news courtesy of the internet it looks like um julia fox has now become the new de facto model for supreme going forward maybe she might be the new it hot girl they have in some of the ads which i'm down for and which i'm a big fan of this is courtesy of inst it, the twitter that i've actually found or stumbled across i think some people have posted it but it's an advertising campaign a poster they put around in different places uh, which features julia fox sat on the lap i think of tyshawn or somebody i'm not too sure um they're on a, a faux plane going somewhere and she's got basically an air stewardess um, outfit on and i have to be honest i actually prefer this version of julia fox than the high fashion version of julia fox i think high fashion julia fox come across a bit too try hard um i feel like the julia fox that we all kind of know in the scene is the person that was obviously featured on uncut gems a person that was a somewhat you know for lack of a better term was an art hoe and somebody who was legitimately far more interesting than most actresses that we see out and about in it in culture at the moment because she actually lived an interesting life has some interesting stories was a practicing artist herself in some respects and just somebody who was that kind of girl about town circling in the culture doing a thing obviously things changed when she got into acting and started doing that properly and maybe if we weren't in the pandemic was she able to kind of really promote herself after uncut gems come out she could have gone a different route but of course having a kid probably changed things also but i just think in general aesthetically in terms of her look and her appeal being a white lady with with, you know fat tits and a big bum aligning yourself with streetwear and being a sort of art ho kind of person is a far more in tune with her brand than chasing the fashion people they're a bit I'm not say vapid but they're a little bit seasonal in their love because they're only kind of cut you know they're only basically trying to um you know leech off of her relative stardom of the being connected with kanye because she's connected with kanye but after a while they're going to get bored of her and move on but i feel like if she was a bit more in line with whatever you call this side of things in streetwear she would have a far more fruitful and probably beneficial career going forward you can easily see her becoming you know involved in working with some of these brands behind the scenes maybe starting her own thing i don't know there's more i feel like avenues that she could go in if she decided to really lean into the you know creative scene kind of thing as opposed to going to the fashion route things and ultimately again she's not wearing anything supreme i don't think from this shoot she's just wearing a kind of a faux air stewardess outfit but i think she fits the stuff far better than she would fit anything in terms of high fashion personally for me the best looks that she's come out of really in that kind of scene has been the diesel type looks which you would assume or i could easily say are a lot you know our kind of streetwear influence in terms of the denim and the casual clothing but not what you know whatever you call it but i don't necessarily think she looks the greatest when it comes to just fashiony fashiony with a capital f things maybe that's just me but um yeah i like this i love this and this also might be um the first evidence that we see of tremaine's um creative director reign that he's now you know newly appointed the creative director of supreme this might be one of the first pieces of content we see um that he maybe has had a hand in producing because this feels very zeitgeist it feels very of the moment somebody that's kind of tapped in and kind of observing culture and is able to maybe pull people you know it's maybe maybe able to kind of give people a platform and maybe put them on a pedestal that people maybe aren't seeing them on maybe people see her as as a, just a kind of a fame hungry whore or something but maybe he's able to kind of see it through the lens that we're seeing it through and say no nah, she's somebody that people should rate some people should respect the hustle and somebody that people kind of stand and yeah here's how we're going to present her we're going to throw this narrative out there they're, they're putting this spin on her we're going to put this spin um, and maybe this is what we're seeing or maybe this is just what they're always planning to do in the first place and i'm reading too much into it i don't know but also the end point of it to end this podcast on allegedly there is news courtesy of the interwebs that now supreme are due to open up a second store in london so not only are they've got the main store i don't know where it is i don't know where it is is it in soho wherever it is right it's in soho i've only been there a couple of times in my life actually to be honest but they're going to open another one in london as well so clearly um the whole idea that supreme is dying or it's on the downward trend has been you know greatly exaggerated because they keep opening more stores um they keep you know going from success to success they keep signing new people they keep hiring new people and they just keep chugging along like a relentless consistent um, machine that they are and i think in general 
why they able to do that is because they put the right people in the right position and it kind of basically runs itself after that if you put people in the right position in there and you have um, a real solid foundation the codes of supreme are basically engraved um you know anyone that's a fan of the brand can essentially kind of get it in terms of what they want to do and what they want to put out and long as the people that you're putting in there have the right ideas and the right vision and the right application you're going to be fine and i think that's what basically they're doing now with this brand and i can't wait to see how they end up evolving in the next 10 to 20 years because clearly now it's not the brand that i grew up loving in terms of it being my little secret that i kind of kept from my friends and no one actually knew about it because it's the most you would say probably the most popular street rare, the po most popular street rare brand in the world right there was a time when bape was that brand um but definitely supreme has surpassed them you know 10 times over especially with the level of consistency and the fact that james has been james jb has been the main person in charge and he's kind of kept a tight rein on things even though they've got investments and people felt like they're diluting a brand me personally i feel like there's been a lot of dilution in terms of the logos splayed all over the clothing like stuff like this whoever that model is wearing so whoever that model is wearing the jacket sitting down um with the supreme on the back i feel like in years gone by that would have been a one or two piece thing in the collection but nowadays there's at least more than 10 pieces in the collection that have supreme splayed on the chest on the backs of the shoulders somewhere along the side of the leg it's all a bit much but of course that's because you know there's a whole new different consumer base out there ready and willing to buy that shit and they want to have they want people to know they're wearing supreme so i get that side of things but you know maybe that's the only style of things that i'm not really a fan of but everything else i love and i can't wait to see more of this now again this i think i'm not mistaken this was uh taken by legendary um, photographer and director harmony corain so hopefully we're going to see more stuff from him too with supreme going forward